Bandicoot Retrospective. Press start to begin. The year is 2000 and Crash Bash was just released for the PlayStation. With Naughty Dog's deal with Universal Interactive Studios being over with the release of Crash Team Racing, they decided to go their separate ways. Naughty Dog became an official subsidiary of Sony Computer Entertainment and would go on to develop Jack and Daxter the precursor legacy for the PlayStation 2. Meanwhile, Mark Cerny of Universal went on to create his own subsidiary of Universal Interactive Studios, Cerny Games, and teamed up with Eurocom Entertainment Software to create a whole new Crash game of their own. This is how Crash Bash was born. Will Crash's first game without Naughty Dog suffer from the loss, or will Crash continue to go strong? Let's find out. Somewhere in hyperspace, Aku Aku and Uka Uka are arguing at the temple over whether good or evil is stronger. Uka Uka wants to settle their feud once and for all, and goes to attack Aku Aku, but Aku shuts that shit down. He says that they are not allowed to fight lest they anger the Ancients. They then decide to have a contest of champions to determine their fate. Aku Aku summons Crash and Coco, and Uka Uka summons Cortex, Brio, Tiny, Dingo Dial, Koala Kong, and newcomer Rillaroo. Aku Aku points out that this isn't a fair competition, and Uka Uka gives over Tiny and Dingo Dial to fight for the good side. With that, the games begin. Depending on who you play as depends on who you get guiding you and what ending you get. If you play as Cortex, Brio, Koala Kong, or Rillaroo, you will be guided the whole game by Uka Uka. When you beat the final boss, you will get the evil ending. Uka Uka reveals that his plan all along was to use this competition to distract Aku Aku while his operative secretly collected the power crystals. With this, Aku Aku warns Crash and Coco that the world as they know it is about to end and they should run for their lives. Jesus Christ, dark much? On the flip side, if you play as Crash, Coco, Tiny, or Dingo Dial, you will have Aku Aku for a guide. In the good ending, Aku Aku reveals that he knew Uka Uka's plan to obtain the crystals and got them himself. He locks away the crystals out of Uka Uka's reach and banishes him for tampering with the crystals. All in all, the story of this game is pretty much what one would expect for a spin-off title, which is a little disappointing coming right off the heels of Crash Team Racing. It also feels like a downgrade because all of the characters in the game other than the masks feel pretty... nothing? They don't emote, they don't really do anything other than stand there. Even when Uka Uka is threatening Cortex and Brio, these two characters barely feel like they're comprehending what's going on. Coming after games that were known for expressing personality through animation, Crash Bash leaves a lot to be desired. With all of that in mind, Crash Bash's story gets my rating of a C-. <laughs> Crash Bash was called a Mario Party clone when it was released, and this is an insult to Mario Party. Crash Bash consists of a collection of party games that you must beat three times in order to get the trophy. Get all the trophies in the warp room and you'll fight a boss. Rinse repeat until you beat the game. I'm not going to really go over each of the games, mostly because I assure you the only levels you will remember are the air hockey ones. Now, I'm going to say something in a second, but before I do, I want to give some context so you know the gravity of what it means for me to say this. I've been through a lot with the Kirby retrospective. Kirby's Pinball Land is frustrating as hell. Kirby's Block Ball asks for too much of the player. Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn's Devilish Mode is so bad it downright ruins the game. Though I may not complete every game, I do try to at least finish every game if I can. I could not beat Crash Bash. I know, I know, I, it won't happen again, I promise. But hear me out. One day, after a particularly frustrating session of recording Crash Bash, I decided to look up speedruns of the game to maybe get some pointers. That's when I found this video right here. Beating the ultimate Crash Bash speedrun by The Rixer. 
Link to the video is in the description. In this video, the Rixer describes some details about Crash Bash that I find absolutely detestable. The game straight up cheats. Not only are you given debuffs within the different challenges of the game, but the game will secretly buff up the computer player to make the game even harder. Hell, the speedrun strat for the final boss, Nitrous Oxide, is to lose to him anywhere from three to six times, that way the player can take advantage of the AI getting weaker with every loss, just to stand a chance against him. This is absurd, and I must say to Mark Cerny, your contributions to the video game industry are massive. You helped design Sonic 2, you created Sega Technical Institute, you brought about some of the best designs in the Crash Bandicoot series. You are responsible for some of the best designs of every PlayStation since the PlayStation 2. With all that being said, this is one of the worst and most laziest design decisions I have ever seen. With all of that in mind, Crash Bash's gameplay gets my rating of an F. <laughs> This game just looks... bad. Remember the lush environments we used to be able to explore throughout this franchise? How about we trade it for... Box. Every single stage in this game is stuck within almost the same size box, aside from the ones where you push players out of the arena. I understand it's a party game, but where's the variety? They're either repeats of previous games, or just boring, beige-colored blech. Also, the character models are the worst these characters have ever looked. Where's the animation? Where's the character? Where's everything the Crash series is known for? The soul of Crash has been sucked out of this game in favor of a Crash Pandicoot that goes... Where are all the voices? The character moments? Why does Uka Uka sound like a discount Shao Kahn? It's just worse in the visual department on all accounts. The music is bland and derivative. The main theme of this game sounds like Crash Bash is copying off of Crash 3's homework, but trying not to make it obvious. I mean, like, listen to it. The only good song in this game is the loading screen theme, which, good lord, do you hear all the time. It's honestly kind of maddening after a while. With all of that in mind, Crash Bash's presentation gets my rating of a D. Completion. Completion? You want me to complete this game? I couldn't even fucking finish the game and you're asking about completion? You know what? This game cheats. So, why shouldn't I? <laughs> there. I completed it. Do I recommend it? No way, it's way too easy. Things aren't looking too hot for our Bandicoot friend without Naughty Dog. First game without him and we get a game with a bare bones, uninspired story, frustrating and unfair gameplay, the worst graphics and music in the series so far, and a completion that I don't even want to touch. With all of that in mind, Crash Bash gets my overall rating of a D. I am never picking this game up ever again. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video, and if you like the Crash Retrospective, please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and hit that bell so you don't miss the next episode. We also have merch in the description below where you can get our shirts, mugs, and stickers to enrich your gameplay experience. I'd like to give a special shout out to Andrews Retro Games and Daniel Hawkins for being the most well-esteemed guests of them all. You could also become a channel member to get all of these videos when I'm finished editing them, as opposed to when they're scheduled to come out. Next week, we'll be looking at the next Crash game in the lineup, Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. With that, I'm Bottles, and I bid you, my well-esteemed guests, adieu.